Hi there, I'm Sophia Hernandez, and today we are talking to a creative genius and never ceases to surprise us how many things she is able to do. Today in the spotlight is Alyssa Lamas. <laughs> Alyssa and I, we go way, way, way back. We are very, very good friends. But for those that don't know Alyssa, can you tell uh, them a little bit about yourself? Wow, this is going to be hard. (laughs) In the spotlight. (laughs) I daydreams of answering interviewers and like knowing what I'm going to say and then actually happening. I'm like, like, I'm living in Miami and I basically have been DJing a lot at local clubs. And I also... I have different aliases, so I have me as an individual artist, which is Phoenix, and then I also have my collective, which is with my two like best friends, which is called Rougie Tunes, and then I also have like an identity with my boyfriend, and when we when we play together, we're called a witch in a tree, and I basically just have been in Miami in the nightlife, just trying to put myself out there and trying to figured myself out as an artist along the way just great experiences meeting great people and that's basically where I'm at right now I also love um, film photography I I really want to like unpack that because I have a lot of questions about all the different yeah. aliases okay how so like how did each one come about do each one of them have like a specific meaning based on you know, you by yourself, you with your boyfriend, you with your two friends. And for those that don't know, so I think the first one that you did really was like Rougie Tunes, right? Yeah. And then Phoenix kind of came about and then the one yeah. with you and your boyfriend. Yeah. And Alyssa, as she said, and she alluded to, she's kind of been like tearing it up on the Miami nightlife scene. And she's been performing with her friends, solo with her boyfriend at a bunch of different venues, probably for, I would say like what, about almost a year, a little bit less than a yeah. year? A little over a year. Basically. Yeah. So, so how did the the names kind of come about? Like, how, when did the idea for Rougie Tunes kind of start? Because that was like the first one. So Natty, which is a, a girl in Rougie Tunes, we were friends. Well, I knew her. I, I knew both of the girls like in high school too, like for so long. But in college, me and Natty got really close, and she lived like so close to me in FSU. And we both kind of just had a love for like creating playlists for like special occasions and just we were both into that stuff and we got really close and then we started like taking interest in mixing together and luckily like our good friend that lived at I don't know if you've heard of Moose House from Tallahassee yeah Yeah. I have our good friend that lived there is a DJ so he had like all the equipment and me and Natty would just like ask him questions and that kind of like sparked our interest and we basically just had like both wanted to do something with music and we didn't know what like we wanted to be able to curate specific sounds for different um occasions and we didn't know really how to do that like i know there's obviously people that are sound engineers and like they score movies or they're like you know what i mean we just didn't know what we wanted to do we wanted to like express our music in a way but we're not like musicians really like we don't play the piano or whatever so Natty always had this idea and she literally had like, I think she had a, a fake, like one of those fake Instagram accounts and the name was Ruji. Okay. I don't even think, there's not a real like meaningful meaning. It's just like she liked Rouge, which is red in French. And then like, I think during the time, like that word bougie was coming along, you know, she kind of just mixed them together. Crafty, I like that. <laughs> She just mixed it together and it also has a nice ring to it. Like it kind of reminds us of like Looney Tunes in a way, you know? Yeah. Rougie, Looney. Rougie came about because we all had this idea. And then our friend Milu, who had also been killing it in nightlife, like she just has always, like her heart and soul has always been in music. She called us like last year in March and was like saying that she has this idea and she thought of me and Natty. She knows that we're like, very passionate and into music and all this stuff. And we were like, dude, we have like this kind of same idea. So we kind of just all had the same idea and it just like went from that call on. We were like, wow, we like, this is like divine timing or something like that. We all have the same idea and like, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
you've always been somebody who gravitated towards the arts. You, you mentioned that you have a passion for photography and I think like you've always been in tune with music, but did you ever think that you would be not like a listener, but like a creator of it in a way? And like people would be listening I, to what you're creating? Literally, I never, I always knew I wanted to be a part of music somehow, just because I just always love the like the nightlife. I just love concerts. Like I've always loved, um, if I find a really good song, I'll send it to all my friends and I'm like, you need to hear this. Like I want people to hear what I find. And I just think, I think mixing is a perfect way to express that because you're just gathering a bunch of songs that you um, really love and that you think will bring good energy depending on the, because I, I see DJs as like music, like collectors in a way, you're like collecting a bunch of different music so you could cater to any sort of um, event or audience, you know? And now I'm like wanting to learn how to produce so I could like make my own music. And I honestly, no, I never really thought I'd come this far at all. <laughs> And for you, even that process and that learning curve, because you didn't know how to mix before and then someone kind of taught you the ways to do it. What was that process like? Was it frustrating? Was it not? Was it a lot of, was it a big learning curve? Was it a small one? It honestly clicked with me pretty fast. Like, I feel like with, um, at least for me, everyone has different strengths, but my strength is my ear. I've always had a really good ear. Like if I hear a song, I could like find a way to play it on the piano and stuff like that. So I think I already had that, strength going into mixing as to like hearing what songs will sound good together like i think the biggest learning curve of that was just the technical stuff like learning all the buttons i still don't know right. all of it because i'm not a really techie person it's more the technique that is a learning curve because you need to learn how to like ease a song in or like take out a certain sound from one song so it doesn't like sound too much to the other one and like there's also effects you could use there's like so much that I have yet to master, but I never really got frustrated ever. It's been, That's good. Cause I, I feel like I look at a soundboard and I feel like I don't even, I wouldn't even know where to start. I'm like, there's way too much stuff on here that I'm so, like, why don't we just press play and, and go and okay. next song. <laughs> there's literally so much stuff. And like my boyfriend is literally a wizard with the technology aspect of it. I mean, he also has a great ear, but like, he just is so good at with the buttons and stuff. And when I watch him, I'm like, how do you do that? And how does it feel for you too? Cause obviously, you know, it kind of went from the three of you to now you kind of doing it a little bit independently at some times, and then you doing it with your boyfriend at some times to have, like to look out into a crowd and see people enjoying what you're creating. What has that been like for you? It honestly doesn't even feel real. I feel like. <laughs> I feel like this whole process, I haven't really seen it as like, I don't know how to explain, like it's grown very organically in a way. Like this whole, I never expected to play at like a club or anything. Like we were kind of just doing this for fun in a way and like, cause we wanted to learn and then came all these opportunities and stuff. And it kind of just like, I still feel like I'm someone that they're bringing in to like have ox at the party. Like it's like, I can't believe that I'm like the person actually giving the sound and like even yesterday when me and my girls like looked up and everyone was loving it like yelling and we were just like what like this is insane like people are literally surrounding us and dancing to us like yeah it feels surreal honestly and it's like such good energy and it feels like it just feels it feels nice knowing that people are liking songs that I enjoy and like in my head, I, I think people will like it and I love to dance to them. So I'm like, I want them to do the same, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and I feel like too, we're in this age where a lot of people in our generation, right? Like kind of like you, I feel like you've always had things that have been of interest to you and hobbies, right? And, and it's kind of knowing what to pursue wholeheartedly. And like maybe with something that could be more of like a side project. What has that process been like for you? Because you do, again, and just me knowing you, you have so many different things that I think bring you joy and that I think you like to explore, but picking the ones and choosing the ones that you're like, okay, this one I'm gonna dive like 110% in, this one's only gonna be like 60%. What has that been like for you, that process and determining that? Um, I actually just kind of had, not an awakening, but like kind of an awakening like the other month. And I, I was a barista at this cafe 
And I really just realized that like my heart wasn't in that. Like I'm not the kind of person that could have a job that is making good money, but I'm not enjoying. Like I don't, I'd rather not. Like I'd rather have less money and be putting my energy to something that I really enjoy, you know? So I left that job and I decided to just like wholeheartedly, even though my heart has always been in it, but not all my time is allocated to like Ruji or to myself as like an artist. Right now, I've just been really zoning in on music and I really want to um, like explore myself creatively and really just help Ruji grow. But we also want like our individual names to grow. So at the end of the day, it'll just help our whole brand, you know? It just feels like it feels right. Like obviously I dabble in photography, but that's, I could tell that that's not right now what I really want to like go into, you know? Like I do it for fun, but music is definitely, it wasn't hard to figure out. Like I felt it, like I just knew, I don't know. Yeah, I listen, I preach on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, gut feelings, they're guardian angels. Like when you know, you know, and that, that's really it. But it does take a big, leap of faith you know like I think too it's it's scary because especially something like this that it's you know I think the arts get a bad rep right because it's like the 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 field that maybe doesn't have as much credibility doesn't have as much of a foundation or something that you could fall back on if shit hits the fan and you need to like exactly. slice and dice without like gigs or something right you know? what was that like for you like was there like a hesitation at all was there kind of like needing to like talk it over with people you were just like I'm gonna just try it and like where did that inner confidence come from? <laughs> I've always been, I don't know if it's like a bad thing. Obviously I need to balance it, but I've always been just very optimistic, like almost blindly optimistic. I think it might be because I'm a Sagittarius and they're literally known to be like the optimist. But um, I just very much don't, obviously with some things I do, but I don't really like think of the bad stuff that might happen just because at the end at the end of the day if I truly believe like something is going to be good and like it's worth it like I think it will just bring me good you know what I mean versus yeah. just worrying about everything obviously you always have to have a backup plan like right now I am also a copywriter and it's like a part-time job and I just do it from home so I have that to fall back on but I truly I don't know the worries don't come to me I just <laughs> Listen, I'm, very, I'm pretty optimistic well sometimes the that's the way to go you know yeah. and and I feel like too let's talk a little bit more about the business side because I think with that too right when you are developing your own brand you are the newbie in this scene right probably with a bunch of people who have been doing this for years and years how do you know number one how much you're worth when other companies ask you what your rate is how do you know how to like solidify yourself when you're the new kid walking in Yes. Okay. So I would say out of the three, I'm the one that knows maybe the least about the business side. That's something that I also want to allocate time to learn about. Um, Natty works for a business that kind of like can apply to our business. So she knows it all. And she's like kind of like our financial person. And then Milu, who's the other girl, um, she's been in the game. Like she's been in the nightlife. She knows a lot of people. So she's been like just talking to people and gets advice from like very, like people who have been in this, you know? So I think uh, they've taught me a lot, but when it comes to like rates and stuff, that's just been something, it's hard, you know? Like, especially in the beginning starting out, you need to put yourself out there so that your mentality is I'll take what I can get. But I also think for anyone putting themselves out there, like you kind of have to have like that fake it till you make it mentality. Like there, there obviously is a balance. You can't just act like you have to be humble and everything, but you have to just know your worth. And I think there was a point where, I don't know, maybe it was a show that we saw like a crowd or just like every time that we play, we'd be, we always bring a crowd and everyone always enjoys it. And we actually were talking about it the other day. We're, we're like, this is our rate. And if someone like dips lower, like, no, that's not meant for us right now because like we truly think especially with three girls. So imagine if we get paid like a hundred, it's like, we're not really getting anything. You just really have to put your foot down and like trust in yourself and it'll work out. Like you really need, especially as a woman, I don't know. I feel like you, you could be downplayed a lot, but you just have to, you have to be firm. <laughs> 
For sure, for sure. Yeah. And for you too, I think it's a, like you mentioned, it's an interesting circumstance because it's not just you all the time by yourself. At some points it is, but you yeah. also work with your friends in one avenue and you work with your significant other in another. What is even that like? Because, you know, you always have both sides, right? Some people are like, I would never give up, you know, trade working with my friends for the world. And other people are like, hell no. You know, what has that process been like navigating both with your significant other and your friends? It's been beautiful honestly like I feel like it's opening up a whole new side of all of us and we also have just gotten so close in the process like we were always close but now we kind of realize in the middle of us starting Ruji, like we need to be friends too like we need to understand each other emotionally we need to know we just need to know each other you know because I don't know it just makes things more fluid and like smooth but it's been very interesting and definitely, honestly, pretty triggering, but in the best way, like kind of figuring stuff out about yourself that you need to work on. And it's like, I would not switch that for the world. That's how I know these are like my girls. Cause like, we always are so honest with each other. We'll always like call each other out if we're doing something like, but it's always with the intention of like growing, you know what I mean? Which is what I love. And also my boyfriend too. And people love are like people love love like people are so cheesy they're like why you like play with your boyfriend I'm like yes he it's never really been there's never been a difficult time with him like we're honestly like best friends and he's the same like we just kind of marry each other so like it brings out like our like shadow I don't know if that makes sense but yeah. um we have a very a growth mindset too so honestly, most of the time it doesn't even feel like work at all. It just feels like, like we're just navigating through life. But this, I don't know. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And you know what? And I think people, a lot of times, right? When you're trying to explore what it is, I think either people, people our age, people younger, people older who are going through that, like, you know, reevaluating stage. Yeah. I think everybody wants to just feel that kind of pure, joy and bliss from the thing that they get to do every single day exactly. and exactly. to be able to achieve that to be able to have that what has that kind of been like process for you like even a learning curve because maybe it wasn't always like that for you at one point until you figured out like hey this is what I wanted like for people who are in that stage now what kind of advice do you have for them honestly it's so cheesy but like follow your heart yeah. <laughs> like honestly if you, you have to be in tune with your yourself and just your body and I feel like you know when you aren't 100% enjoying something and I totally agree you have to do some things sometimes that you don't like to like get where you want to be for example like when I was a barista I had I needed money I needed to save some money but at the end of the day like in order to grow and to succeed there's always going to be like sacrifice some sort of sacrifice or just some sort of of like leap of faith and that scary part I, I think is where like growth happens I guess I would just say to take the leap of faith and trust yourself yeah. and <laughs> and two I think I think you've always been and it, it kind of mirrors off of this like in the things that were more hobbies and now in this you've always been pretty comfortable or at least it seems that way with like putting yourself out there you know like not really worried about what people think or what people are going to say. Like you just, it brings you joy. So you're going to do it. Like, and I think that's a very difficult stage to get to if that doesn't come naturally to you. Like if that's not your own personality, what has been some of the learning curves that you've experienced with that or the advice, or has that always been the case for you that you've always been open about it? Or did there come a point where you kind of just were like, let's go. <laughs> I feel like I've honestly, always just been like an open book like it's always been come natural to me even there was even a point in my life where I was envious of people who were so low-key and like very secretive and I kind of in a way wanted to be like that and in the process of me trying to be like that I was like that's really not me like I it felt like I was battling myself I was like what well, I guess everyone's different but it's also um, I have to be mindful that a lot of people have to, like struggle opening up and stuff because sometimes I'm like it's so easy but like to remember that everyone is different and everyone has their own personalities so I can't really remember a time where I 
struggled with that. Like at least maybe on social media, there was a time where I was I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't do this. But now I'm just like, I don't care. <laughs> and I feel like too, that's just, I think, um, you know, probably having the support that you have with your friends and your boyfriend, like it probably makes it easier because you're all in that same boat of like, again, you have this brand and you're trying to be able to promote that because this is hopefully going to be what fulfills you for time and time to come. Like the end goal would be to, for this to be my full-time job, you know? And it's also, I also have a very supportive family. I'm very lucky. Like I know a lot of families are very, can be conservative or just like not supportive of like the arts, you know? But thankfully my mom was literally a hippie. My dad is kind of still a hippie. My sister and my brother are both following their passion project. So it's like, it's a good support system, definitely. Yeah, and to have that, you know, I think for you, like if you could kind of just jet set five years into the future, you know, when you're still kind of in this beginning stage and seeing your little empire begin to have that fruition, what are you kind of hoping for in the long term? Not even with just your business, but with yourself. Well, I hope me and my boyfriend have a super cute place together. <laughs> Isn't that always the goal? I want a cute home too. Listen, I think that we're at that age and it's just like, you know what? I want a really cute, humble abode. That would be really nice. <laughs> you want to decorate your own space. Yes. Uh, yes. And have your own space like that. That's, that's nice. Five years. My concept of time lately has changed it's like so like malleable i don't know i hope i hope this is like our full-time job by that point at least almost there and i would love just to be maybe a good goal would be i'd love to be able to be known in different places like be kind of global you know or at least um international love to be able to like be known so if we go to another city they're like oh we want to book know us like i would love to be able to bring what we have here to other places i guess that would be i guess that's a yeah that, that's a good place to be in five years yeah. and to have music out definitely want to have like an album or something yeah oh, that'd be cool we got to keep our ears peeled for that one and <laughs> for people who are Kind of in your same boat, you know, and I think you, and, and again, me just knowing you, I feel like you've had this incredible growth, not just as like figuring out where you are as a person, but like what you want to do with your life. And it's been as your friend and as a supporter, an amazing thing to witness. But like for people who are either going backwards into that stage or who are moving forward, trying to figure that out once they are at where you were once, what's kind of any last piece of advice, like some words that you live by, true and true, day in and day out? I always just say to follow your heart, because that's literally, when I was going through, whenever I would go through something rough, my mom would literally always tell me that. And I'm like, like that's the most simple thing you can say. Like, can you just tell me what to do? <laughs> She's like, you just gotta listen to yourself. And I honestly just think that is very true. And to just enjoy, all the simple things in life and I don't know usually when you're going through something rough it's hard to forget it's very easy to just like have tunnel vision and it's like really easy to forget just like the grand scheme of things what there is to be grateful for around you I just yeah I would just say to follow your heart and to always open your eyes and just Enjoy the simple things, like be appreciative of the, of the little things. That's <laughs> so simple, yeah. like I don't even know. You know what, it's simple, but it's easier said than done. So it's happy to, it's good, happy for me to see that that's what you're succeeding in. And, and hopefully it inspires others to kind of just, you know, either follow something that they're passionate about or kind of just reevaluate the things in their surroundings yeah. and in their, in their life. You have to believe in yourself, you know, because yeah, sure. nothing's gonna happen. Like you have to have the self love, even though we all struggle with it. But <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us on the spotlight. If you want to learn more about Ruji Tunes or Alyssa Solo as Phoenix, um, I'm gonna put all her social down below. 
And again, we're going to have a new episode of The Spotlight every Thursday. Alyssa, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>